We now return to Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Policy Institute, the radio show discussing the honest truth about Illinois policy and politics. Here's AM 560's Dan Proft. Dan Proft back with Pat Hughes on this edition of Rising. And uh, Pat, it's interesting. We're talking about the uh, Cook County Sugary Drink Tax and the revolt that it has stirred. It's such a revolt that uh, Tony Preckwinkle is suffering politically as a result. There's some real question about her uh, vulnerability now. Uh, I know one county board member who voted against it, uh, Richard Boykin, who is a former Danny Davis staffer, uh, it has been rumored to potentially be willing to challenge Preckwinkle in a primary. So uh, now there's movement afoot for a repeal vote. Isn't this interesting, too? I mean, this tells you everything you need to know about uh, Democrat Pauls. Tony Preckwinkle wins election in part promising to repeal the Todd Stroger sales tax increase, which they sh- sh- then, along with the Cook County Board, she does, only to reimpose it after she repealed it. Now she imposes a soda tax, but because of the re- unexpected revolt, she and the Cook County Board may move to repeal it to save their phony baloney jobs. One thing is consistent. They will take as much as you let them take up until their jobs are on the line. Then they will relent. Well, at least, thank goodness, that people have, you know, decided to protest against this and that this is being discussed, the repeal is being discussed. Dan, this is the sort of the straw that broke the camel's back kind of circumstance. People get taxed to death, income taxes, property taxes. We talked about sin taxes on our prior segment. And then at some point, they throw up their hands and say, hold on a second, you're going to tax my sugary drink that, by the way, doesn't have any sugar in it or my coffee. And and then it just, it's so overbearing, they say enough is enough. Well, I think I'll, that's what's happening here. Also, the, uh, the tiering the special rules for special people. Right. Uh, Everybody who pays their own freight and plays by the rules pays the tax. People, uh, and this is not castigating people, but I'm just distinguishing, people who are on uh, welfare, who are link card holders, do not pay the tax. And it just shows... I I think that that grinds people, and understandably so. It does, and it also shows how the health part of this is such pretext. And you mentioned this on the prior segment. The, oh, so the people on link card, we don't care about their health. We yeah, don't care right. if they get fat. We don't care if they're drinking things that are bad for them. And the answer is, of course, they don't care. They don't care. And that well, obviously the, shows it. Yeah, the whole thing is a specious it's a, argument. It's a scam, right. Uh, so the interesting thing is not enough pressure being put on Democrat state legislators in the city and in Cook County. What do they think about this? I know they're state legislators, but uh, Republicans are forced to weigh in all the time on everything uh, that has nothing to do with their particular constituency, uh, in term, at least in terms of their power. I mean, Governor Ronder this week was asked about DACA. Uh, uh, the governor has very limited power to deal with the DACA issue. That's why it's a it's a federal court issue and a congressional issue. But he's asked about it. Where are the uh, are earnest uh, Scoop Jacksons in the Chicago press corps to uh, ask every Democrat about the Cook County sugary drink tax to ask every Democrat about Luis Gutierrez's comments this week about General Kelly, a gold star father who El Gallito said is a disgrace to the uniform he used to wear. Uh, you know, I, I, other than talk radio, I don't hear or see that being covered in the Chicago press corps, or the DC press corps. So, you know, this is where we've got to push the envelope and press people to be held to account and also to be forced to weigh in where they otherwise fear to tread because, of course, they don't want to do anything controversial. They want to just sit in their sinecures and collect other people's money. For more on this topic specifically, we're pleased to be joined by Amanda Bila. Amanda Bila is uh, running for state representative on the northwest side of the city. She is a Republican challenger to incumbent state rep John D'Amico, a Democrat, and uh, Amanda is also a former Chicago public school teacher. Amanda, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Great. I'm, I'm so happy to be here today. So, uh, happy so to join you and talk about this. Uh, and we're happy to have you. And so, uh, John D'Amico, uh, he supported, uh, voted for that uh, huge tax increase. Uh, that was that uh, yeah. that budget deal, the 32 percent personal income tax increase, 35 percent corporate income tax increase, no spending reforms at the state level, and. Um, uh, now he is uh, weighing in on the sugary drink tax, is he? Well, I mean, I think this just shows D'Amico's hypocrisy. Um, yeah, now he has come out and said, I am opposed to the soda tax. 
you know, and I congratulate him on that. Great. Yeah, it's an awful tax. Um, you know, I was opposed to it long before uh, it was passed. He was not, you know. He he didn't lobby his Democratic uh, fellow Democrats or Cook County board friends that are in his party and his machine. You know, he was fine with it. It wasn't until after the fact, you know, put his finger in the wind that he goes, oh, wow, people are opposed to this. I mean, we live just around the corner from each other. I know how people in our neighborhood feel about this soda tax. I mean, when I'm canvassing, you know, all you have to say is soda tax and people's heads explode. It's that big an issue with folks. And so now he's kind of seen, oh, this isn't a good tax. But the fact is, the income tax is a lot as bad as the soda tax is. The 32% on the income is a lot worse for Illinois families. Um, so, yeah, he can say now, oh, I'm opposed to the soda tax after the fact. But, you know, dollar for dollar, the income tax is a lot worse. And he was all for that. The courage. The business tax also. Yeah, the courage to me too when it's safe to me too. Yeah. Hey, Amanda, yeah, um, absolutely. Amanda, tell us a little about, you mentioned you were canvassing the neighborhoods. This is a district that I grew up nearby, and, uh, okay. you know, it's been a, a, a sort of a Democrat stronghold. I think that's changing a little bit. How do you convince people that have traditionally voted for a Democrat candidate in D'Amico or otherwise to, to switch parties and, 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 and vote for you? Is it on this tax issue? What are the things you're telling them? What's the response you're getting? Well, I, I mean, I think, I think the tax, that is a big issue. I mean, folks are aware of it. Um, and they're not happy. And it's not just, you know, it is the 32% income, the soda, but it's all the other nickel and dime taxes that they're, they're faced with, you know, whether it's going, you know, at all levels, city, county, state, you know, you go to the grocery store and, you know, seven cents for a plastic bag. I mean, all those things add up. And I think people are recognizing that it's, you know, we've had the same people in position for generations. And they're tired of that. The, the whole idea of the machine is cracking. I mean, when I, when I go door to door, I mean, that's all I have to say is, you know, I'm looking to change Springfield. I'd like to, I'm going against the machine. And people are like, yeah, right on. Um, and, and that goes across the party spectrum. That's not just Republicans saying that. You see Democrats saying that. I mean, we don't have the same patronage system that we didn't once did. Folks are tired of that. You know, they're not, they see that they're not getting uh, anything out of, you know, having their taxes raised, these people in office, what are they getting out of it? They're getting nothing except their taxes raised, you know, insane property taxes, highest in the nation. And, and now I have to pay, you know, a cent per ounce on my soda. I mean, it's kind of a tipping point. I, I would say the soda is the tipping point because people can see it. It's so, uh, you know, you look on your receipt and you're like, oh my gosh. And then, and, and, and also, I mean, in terms of the, uh, the, the storm is raging, but it's all, also gathering. There's, you know, endless waves of this storm, it, it would seem, uh, with respect to f- more property tax increases as right. part of uh, what will likely be required as a result of the school funding deal that was inked in Springfield. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I, you know, when I talk to folks, everybody has this exit plan in place. And, and that's really sad. I love the city. I don't want to leave. I mean, but I'm not going to lie. My husband and I in the past, we've talked about it. Um, everybody has this plan, and you keep putting more and more taxes, especially the property taxes. I mean, it's painful. It's just a punch in the gut when you get that bill. And, and the question is, you know, are we going to fight or, you know, are we going to leave? Um, I think you said it best, the revolt or bolt. I mean, that's, that's what we're coming to. Yeah, normally yeah, um, you, yeah you're, you're Dan's a genius. Uh, I mean, t- tell us about the response then. Is, are you getting the sense that people are feeling, okay, I, I, I'm talking about bolting, but I want to revolt. And, and can you, and how are you going about stoking that revolt in this district? So, I mean, this would be an incredible victory for people who think that Springfield is completely out of control and a victory for, um, for you know, the people in your district, knowing that someone who's going to fight for their well-being is going to be down there. Do you feel the response percolating in the district? Yeah, because I, mean, I think people, I think it comes about choice. People... I think a lot of times in our district, um, they perceive that there's no choice. That's just, oh, the same people on the ballot every year. And it's like, you come around, and you're like, oh, it's somebody new. I mean, it, it's kind of like shocking. People are like, somebody else is running. I mean, regardless of party, they're not even looking at that going, somebody else is running. It's giving them choice. And what I've said to folks when I'm talking to them, I'm like, you know what? Give me two years. You know, you've had the same people in office for literally generations. Give me two years. If you don't like what you're doing, you can vote me out. You know, I don't have this 
crazy machine that's protecting me that, you know, gifts me the, with this position for life. You can vote me out. Let's see if we can make a change. And I think that respond, you know, people respond to that. You know, they don't like the system of, uh, you know, this hereditary position where you've had for generations. They don't respond well to that. That's not what our founders envisioned. You know, they, they like the idea of the citizen politician, you know, you know, where you go to Washington, or in my case, Springfield, and, you know, you do your job, and then you come back to your community, and you're part of it. You know, you plow your fields, you run your stores, you know, you raise your family. That's the type of representative that folks want in our district. But that's not what they have now. She is a former CPS teacher, now a Republican candidate for state rep, uh, running against incumbent John D'Amico. She's Amanda Bila. Amanda, uh, people want more information about your campaign. How do they get it? Um, we have a website coming up. It's coming online and then actually this next week, and it's just uh, www.amandabila.com. Um, or you can look me up on Facebook. It's just Amanda Bila, um, 15 districts, if you search that. All right. And, yeah, and we'll be going around door to door. That's uh, what we're doing right now. Amanda Bila, B-I-E-L-A. Thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you, Dan. Okay, bye.